Good afternoon and welcome. My name is Joe Bartolomeo and I'm the Associate Provost for Interdisciplinary Studies and I'm honored to welcome you all to the University Without Walls 50th Anniversary Celebration. I'd like to begin with a land acknowledgement. The University of Massachusetts Amherst acknowledges that it was founded and built on the unceded homelands of the Pocumtuck Nation on the land of the Norwatuk community. We begin with gratitude for nearby waters and lands. We recognize these lands and waters as important relations with which we are all interconnected and depend on to sustain life and well-being. The Pocumtuck had connections with these lands for millennia. Over 400 years of colonization, when Pocum Pocumtuck peoples were displaced, many joined their Algonquian relatives to the east, south, north, and west. That includes Mashpee and, Aqu and Aquina Wampanoag, Nipmuc, Narragansett, Mohegan, Pequot, Mohican communities, and the Abenaki and other nations of the Wabanaki Confederacy. These native peoples still maintain connections and relationships of care for these lands today. We also acknowledge that the University of Massachusetts Amherst is a land-grant university. As part of the Morrill Land Grant Act, portions of land from 82 native nations west of the Mississippi were sold to provide the resources to found and build this university. As an active first step toward decolonization, we encourage you to learn more about the native nations whose homelands UMass Amherst now resides on and the indigenous homelands on which you live and work. We also invite you to deepen your relationship to these living lands and waters. In a press release dated November 2nd, 1971, the university formally announced the University Without Walls pilot concept in education, which began that fall with 30 students studying for bachelor's degree programs designed especially for them. Priority was given to those who would not normally have access to the university. For example, those who have full-time jobs or other responsibilities which would interfere with a regular college program. UWW was intended for students from diverse backgrounds, ages, and interests. Students who have skills but not degrees to get ahead professionally. While much has changed over 50 years, and the University Without Walls has expanded its reach and impact, the fundamental mission remains the same and represents a natural extension of our campus's land-grant origins and a shining example of its ongoing commitment to social responsibility, equity, access, and innovation. Joining us in person, and via live stream are legislators and community leaders, alumni and students, administrators, staff, and faculty, those on whose shoulders we stand, those whose lives were changed by UWW, and those who are the guardians and future of UWW. Thank you all for being here. It's now my distinct... It's now my distinct honor to introduce our first speaker. Kumle R. Sumaswamy has served as Chancellor of the University of Massachusetts Amherst since 2012. A physicist by training, he's an elected fellow of the American Physical Society and the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, and has spent almost his entire professional life at public research universities. Over the past 10 years, he's pursued academic excellence, promotion of research and outreach, and initiatives aimed at addressing campus climate, diversity, and culture. And under his leadership, the campus has experienced unprecedented success. With all key metrics on the rise, the university's moved up significantly in the US News and World Report national rankings, making UMass one of the fastest rising top tier public research universities in the country. Chancellor Subhaswamy's exemplary leadership 
in higher education has been recognized through cover stories in diverse issues in higher education and the Boston Globe Sunday Magazine. Please welcome the man we call Swami, Chancellor Subhaswami. Thank you so much, Joe. I keep telling them to shorten the introduction, but they refuse. So thank you for a very, very, really kind introduction. And thank you all for really being here. I would like to offer a very warm UMass welcome to all our guests. We're especially honored to welcome Senator Edward Markey and Congressman Jim, Jim, Jim McGovern to campus, and of course, our keynote speaker, uh, speaker pro, tem pro tempor of the House of Representatives and proud UWW alumna, Kate Hogan. <laughs> Leader Hogan is a strong supporter of our campus. She's particularly active in UMass Women into Leadership, we call it You Will, uh, working with students to become future political and public leaders. She's also quick to remind me that while she's really proud of our academic success and the national rankings and all of that, but we cannot forget our mission of access and equity. So she's really, clearly, she's the perfect person to help us celebrate this with a keynote. Joining Leader Hogan are members of the campus core legislative delegation who work so hard to ensure that the university is priority number one, I'll call it, on Beacon Hill. Representative Mindy Dome of Amherst, Representative Lindsay Sabadosa from Northampton, Representative Paul Mark from Peru, and Representative Natalie Blay of Sunderland. Please uh, recognize the wonderful team. Also joining us, um, I, I don't know if he's here yet, but Representative Or Orlando Ramos was supposed to be here, and former House member and former judge, the Honorable James Collins, is here as well. Please recognize them. <laughs> and in terms of other elected representatives, um, Roxanne, Ro Roxanne Wiergartner, Mayor of Greenfield, is here with us, and she's a UWW alumna. <laughs> recognize her. Thank you. And Claire Higgins, former mayor of Northampton and a UWW alumni as well. I'd like to take just a moment to thank our house partners for the recently released FY23 state budget. By fully funding our budget request, I, I, I don't think I would ever, I thought I would ever be able to say that, but <laughs> by fully funding our budget request, You will allow us to turn the corner fiscally on the pandemic and continue our upward trajectory. Our great supporters, Senator Joe Comerford of Northampton and Senator Adam Gomez of Springfield, would have joined us today, but they're currently debating a much needed climate change bill in the State Senate. We appreciate all of their support. I also want to thank alumnus Jose Delgado. Where is Jose? I just saw him come in. For joining us, Jose is Governor Baker's Deputy Chief of Staff for Access and Opportunity, and his presence this afternoon demonstrates the support we enjoy from the Governor, the Lieutenant Governor, and their team as the University advances its mission of access and equity. And of course, it's always great to welcome our Congressman Jim McGovern back to the University, a national leader on many issues important to the campus and the region, including food security, uh, Pell Grant expansion, and protection of conservation land. Congressman McGovern is also a forceful and leading voice in Washington on global human rights. And even with his demanding role as chairman of the Rules Committee, he is consistently strong partner and advocate for the flagship and always finds time to return to campus. Congressman, thank you very much for joining us here and thank you for serving the second congressional district with such passion and energy. And in just a few minutes, as a part of my role this afternoon, I'll have the honor of welcoming Senator Ed Markey to the podium. It's wonderful to have all of you here. And as we come here together to celebrate equity and access and the transformative power of the university. Nearly 160 years ago, the university opened its doors as Mass Aggie, participating in a revolutionary experiment 
to democratize higher education. The first students to arrive on campus, 34 young men, almost all farmers from Massachusetts, had up until that point been denied access to a college degree due to their limited wealth and social status. But because of this then radical idea that all deserving individuals should have access to the transformative power of a university, they found themselves on this campus. Of course, the experiment was a flawed one for the definition of who was granted access to the campus remained limited. Still, albeit imperfectly, and from its inception, the university championed the idea of broadening access to a college degree. And with each passing decade, we used our revolutionary spirit to continually evolve and expand both our boundaries for learning and innovation and our understanding of access. It was in this revolutionary spirit that half a century ago, as you heard from Dr. Bartolomeo, we questioned the traditional definition of a student. Why, we asked, was access to undergraduate experience only organized around 18 to 22 year olds? Why was pursuing a bachelor's degree a straight, uninterrupted path? And why was learning limited to four walls in a campus classroom? So in 1971, we responded to these questions by pushing back on the status quo. We reimagined that original experiment to democratize education by launching University Without Walls. For the last 50 years, UWW, as it is fondly known as, has transformed lives by offering access to the excellence of a UMass Amherst education to students around the world at every stage of life. And its success as an alternative path to degree completion has garnered a national and international reputation. We now find ourselves, once again, asking questions about learning, innovation, and the definition of access. For in this rapidly changing world, increasingly, our students expect an educational experience that is both excellent and truly flexible. And once again, University Without Walls is answering the call, challenging the status quo, and leading the change. UWW is responding to this evolving higher education landscape by building on its pioneering mission and its national and international reputation for excellence. Broadening opportunities for flexible learning, UWW has once again channeled that original experiment in democratizing education and expanded access with new approaches to acquiring degrees, skills, and credentials. Just as we did 50 years ago, we're leading a revolutionary change in higher education. As we continue our strong trajectory and become a national model for flexible learning, we celebrate the transformative contributions of University Without Walls. For half a century, UWW has led the way in access, inspired us to always question the status quo, and advanced our excellence. Congratulations to University Without Walls and all our proud alumni. It is now my honor to introduce Senator Ed Markey. The senator is a national and international leader in addressing climate change, the existential crisis of our lifetime. He understands a critical part of this work is ensuring a fair and equitable energy transition. And just a few minutes ago, we held an event celebrating $1 million in congressionally directed funding for the UMass Energy Transition Institute which supports disadvantaged communities in the transition to renewable energy. Senator Markey now joins us to celebrate the 50th anniversary of UWW, another program advancing equity and access. I think I see a theme here. Thank you, Senator Markey, for your commitment to ensuring all communities of the Commonwealth have equal opportunity. And thank you for being here. It's wonderful to have you on the flagship campus. Thank you, Chancellor, so much, and thank you for the excellent leadership which you provide for this world-class <laughs> university. You know, we are so proud of you. We're so proud uh, of um, the student body, all the professors, everyone who just makes this such, such a great place. Uh, and, uh, and I thank everyone else who has joined us here today. It's just an incredible group of people, Representative Mindy Dom, uh, Representative 
Lindsay Sabadosa, Representative Natalie Blay, um, Representative Paul Mark, soon to be Senator Paul Mark, uh, the, uh, uh, the, um, the uh, Mary Jo, uh, 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 Senator Joe Comerford uh, is up in the state legislature uh, uh, right now working. We have uh, Mayor Claire Higgins and Mayor Roxanne uh, Wettergarten. If you want to be mayor in Western Mass, go to the University of Wallace, Wallace. Okay? I mean, that's like a pretty clear, well-worn pathway uh, to uh, leadership. Uh, and, uh, and to my great friend, Jimmy Collins, because Jimmy and I, we were elected. I'm going to say this. I shouldn't say this, but I'm going to say it. It's not advisable to say it, Jimmy, but Jimmy and I were elected as freshman state legislators up in the State House 50 years ago this year. And, uh, and I want to tell you, Jimmy is very smart, intimidatingly smart, okay? And I saw that right off the bat, and it's just so great to see you, uh, my friend. And, and it's so great to be with everyone who is here. And uh, Melanie De Silva, you run this program. Where are you, Melanie? I want Melanie to get the shout out right back in the back of the room. Um, I thank you for all of your great work. And, uh, and who runs the Springfield office? Jesse Levins in the back of the room, you know? The, without walls, that's where they are. And not, you know, not, not in anywhere other than where they should be, you know, always trying to ensure that everything is going well for everyone else. So it's great to be here with you. And when I was sitting here, I was thinking about a university without walls. And I thought about it in terms of my mother. So my story is a Malden story. It's an immigrant story of my grandmother and grandfather and their five daughters. My mother's the second oldest. Mary has just graduated from high school. She's class president. My mother is starting her senior year she's going to be class president. And there's three more sisters to go. But my grandmother died as my mother's about to start high school. And there was no social safety net program. So Mary has to go to work, and my mother has to be a single mom for the three younger daughters. And she had a transfer from the college course to the commercial course. That's just the way it was. So when I was growing up, um, and again, she had to raise the family. Then she got married again when she was 37. She married the 33-year-old milkman for the Hood Milk Company, my father, graduate of the, a graduate of the vocational program at Lawrence High School. And uh, my, mother, my father always said, especially after my mother got Alzheimer's, that, Eddie, it was an honor that your mother married me. You know, she was a brilliant woman. Uh, and so she was like five years into Alzheimer's, and I decided to just interview her. And I asked her, hey, Ma, if you could have gone to college, what do you think you would have been? And she said, no, women don't go to college. I would have never gone to college. And I said, Ma, if you could have gone to college, what do you think you would have been? And she leaned in and she said, Eddie, don't you think I would have been a good teacher? In a world where there's a university without walls, she could have been raising those three young sisters and getting a few courses in college. When she was raising the three sons of the milkman, she could have been getting a few more um, courses. And after we had got out of the house, she could have finished and got her degree and maybe become a teacher because she was an excellent teacher. She raised three sons who all went to college and law school. So she knew what she was doing, but she was denied the opportunity just because of the way the world was structured. Women didn't go to college and you had to go in person. And so what the University Without Walls really represents to me is unlimited opportunity for everyone. And what University of Massachusetts 
has done for 50 years is to give all of the Christina Courtney's uh, and everyone else who comes from immigrant families or for whatever reason might have just had to get off the track for a little while, all of the same ability, all of the same opportunities to maximize their God-given abilities. And so this is about as special a program as can exist. And I heard it out of my mother's mouth when I'm 50 years old, finally telling me what she really had hoped to be, but stoically had never said it to me or anyone else. So a lot of that is pent up inside of people. And uh, Kate Hogan represents you know, all of those ambitions being realized, uh, all of those hopes and dreams finally being able to be fulfilled. And so um, when, when, uh, when I was drafting the telecommunications laws in the 1990s, this one program I made sure would be built in. It was to make sure that there was an E rate, an education rate, to make sure that in Roxbury and in Springfield, the funding would be there on the school desk for computers for poor kids, as well as for the wealthy kids out in the suburbs. When the pandemic hit, I made sure that $7 billion uh, went into the rescue package to pay for bills for kids at home. 12 to 15 million kids did not have the internet at home. They were black, they were brown, they were immigrant. So we have to just continually focus on these issues. As the world moved online, we had to be there. And that's what UMass has done. They have helped people online with flexibility to be able to maximize all of their God-given abilities. And it's my honor to serve with um, Jim McGovern, um, who, if you Google equity, his picture pops up, okay? That's who he is, okay? Every day of the year, all day long, inside of the United States uh, Congress. And, uh, and I can't uh, thank all of you enough for uh, everything um, that you do every single day to make all of this possible. And, uh, and it's my honor right now uh, to uh, introduce our next speaker, uh, a graduate of the class of 21, Georgia Malcolm, to please come up here to do the next introduction. Thank you, Associate Provost Bartolomeo. I am honored to be here this afternoon to share my story with you. I am a single working mother to a wonderful 21-year-old son, Carrington Dow, <laughs> legal guardian to a disabled brother, daughter to a 93-year-old father. I'm also an immigrant from Jamaica and a first-generation college graduate. <laughs> when I embarked on this journey of obtaining a bachelor's degree, it was a lifelong dream coupled with a desire to inspire my son so he could witness firsthand that dreams are attainable if you work hard, persevere, and are resilient in the face of adversity. The University Without Walls Interdisciplinary Studies Program was appealing to me because of its reputation, uniqueness, innovativeness, and progressiveness. Being in a space and being able to be my authentic self in such an environment was important to me. I can say unequivocally in every interaction and class I attended during my three-year tenure, my voice and way of being were honored. Trying to juggle work, care for my family, and attend school was a difficult balancing act. And so I switched to working part-time. I thought this would reduce the work-related stress and allow me to be more focused on my studies. Unfortunately, I experienced financial stress caused by my loss of income. The faculty, staff, and friends encouraged me to apply for scholarships. And I ended up being the recipient 
of four scholarships. Accessing these resources and financial support allowed me to continue my academic journey uninterrupted and able to provide for my family. Embarking on my academic journey was daunting, but it proved manageable because the faculty was understanding and demonstrated a high level of patience and support when unforeseen circumstances occurred in my life that prevented me from meeting deadlines. There was one situation when I was overwhelmed and unable to turn in an, ass an assignment even after an extension was granted. My instructor, Dr. Dorchak, was very understanding and encouraging. This interaction was transformative because it boosted my morale, renewed my determination, and motivated me to work harder. I really want to say a huge thank you to all my professors, staff, faculty, and friends that contributed to my accomplishment. In particular, I would like to personally acknowledge University Without Walls faculty, Dr. Abigail Dolman, <laughs> Dr. Connie Griffin, Dr. Norman Freeman, Bree Shaw, Melanie De Silva, and Dr. Dorchak. And to my wonderful friends who are here who really, you know, this is not written, but they were <laughs> really behind me supporting, Dr. Sonji Anderson, Dr. Carol Bailey, Drs. Letha and Nigel Brissett, and Dr. Lisa Bonifaz. And most of all, my son, Karen Tendell. <laughs> In 2018, completing a bachelor's degree was just a dream, and I sat nervously in a room, kind of like this one, listening to others who had already embarked on this collegiate journey, share their insights and advice. At that moment, I could never have imagined that I would one day be at this podium speaking and sharing my own personal experience with you all for the 50th anniversary of University Without Walls. I stand here before you as proof that University Without Walls works <laughs> and really does change lives. In doing so, it makes dreams come true, and I therefore encourage all the stakeholders present here today to continue nurturing and growing University Without Walls. <laughs> so that it may serve people like myself. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'd just like to say a little bit more about Georgia and her remarkable journey. Uh, Georgia's a 2021 UWW alum who earned a bachelor's degree in interdisciplinary studies with a concentration in business administration. She received the Jack M. Wilson Presidential Scholarship, which is awarded annually to a limited number of students across the UMass system in recognition of outstanding academic performance and a passion for public service. Georgia has decades of experience in banking, management, marketing, and diversity, and inclusion in human resources and staff development. In her current role as administrative assistant to the athletic director and student activities coordinator for the Amherst Pelham Regional School District, she serves on the superintendent's Alana Council and is the district's and, and the district's committee to develop equitable hiring practices. She's also on the executive board and negotiating team of the Amherst Pelham Education Association Union, fighting for fair and livable wages for its members. <laughs> Pelham Elementary School honored her last year by creating the Georgia Malcolm Social Justice Award given each year to a sixth grader who exemplifies her commitment to social justice, service, and community organizing. Congratulations, Georgia. <laughs> the 
And now for some acknowledgments. Many members of the UWW community, past and present, are here with us either in person today or via live stream. Uh, first, I'd like to acknowledge, I don't think he's here, but I'd like to acknowledge Provost John McCarthy and to thank him for his ongoing support of UWW and its mission. We're, we are joined today by our incoming provost, Dean Tricia Serio. Congratu congratulations on your new role, and we look forward to working with you in the years to come. Uh, also, we have uh, one former dean of UWW with us today, Carol Barr. And an, another Barbara Krauthammer said she might be late, so I still hope we'll see her. Uh, I'd like to thank all of you for your service to UWW. Uh, and now I'd like to acknowledge the current chair of the UWW Department of Interdisciplinary Studies, as well as a number of past UWW directors. So when I call your name, please stand. Jackie Castledine. <laughs> Farshid Hajir. Abby Dahlman, Lisa Medanos, and Cynthia Swopus. We're, we're also privileged to have some of the earliest directors of UWW here today. Uh, Gary Bernhard, And joining us via live stream from his home in upstate New York, the very first director of UWW, Tom Clark. We cannot thank all of you enough for everything you've done to build and strengthen UWW. Also here with us in person today are UWW faculty emeriti who dedicated their lives to our mission. So please stand. Liz Brinkerhoff. Ed Golding. Rick Hendra. And Lee Manchester. Finally, we have two UWW alumni from the early days of the 1970s here with us today. Nancy Garabrantz, who graduated in 1977, and Robert Buckner, who graduated in 1974, becoming one of UWW's first alumni. We had to rearrange some pages here, so. It's now my pleasure to introduce our next speaker, Representative Jim McGovern of the Massachusetts 2nd Congressional District. Since being elect, first being elected in 1996, Congressman McGovern has risen to become a leading member of Congress. He's the chair of the powerful House Rules Committee, a senior member of the House Committee on Agriculture Subcommittee on Nutrition and Oversight, chair of the Congressional Executive Commission on China, and the Democratic co-chair of the bipartisan Tom Lantos Human Rights Commission. He's become a champion for all things UMass and was a vital part of securing funding for the campus and for our students in the middle of the pandemic. Please join me in giving a warm UMass welcome to Congressman McGovern. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Joe. Um, and uh, I'm really honored to be here. And uh, I want to also acknowledge Chancellor Subhaswamy, who I think is not only a great leader, but more importantly, a very, very good man. Uh, and I appreciate all that he does, uh, not only for this campus, but for so many good causes. I'm delighted to be here with my friend, uh, Ed Markey, who um, we're so lucky that he is in the United States Senate, and he represents us. 
uh, and fights for all the causes that we care about. My colleagues in the state delegation, uh, the faculty, the students, the administrators uh, here. Um, let me let me just. I, I don't even. I'm I'm like speechless after Georgia. I mean, I don't even know what to say. I mean, I listening to listening to the cheers and the yells and the screams. Uh, you should be running for office, um, and you'd win in a landslide. But what an inspirational story, and, and thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, look, um, I am glad that 50 years ago that UMass was revolutionary enough to embrace this concept of you know, a university without walls. Uh, and um, as I walked into this room here today, um, you know, there are kind of two themes that have emerged. Uh, one is that uh, uh, this program enabled a lot of people uh, to get their degrees who otherwise might not have. But the other theme here, as I look at the people in this room, is that this is a room full of people dedicated to good. Uh, I mean, I, you know, I saw my friend Claire Higgins, former mayor of Northampton, and uh, she told me I was a graduate of this uh, program. Uh, and she heads up community action for Pioneer Valley, continuing to do good work uh, for people oftentimes who are overlooked in our community. I saw Roxanne Wiedegarter, who's here, the mayor of, of Greenfield, um, you know, an incredible leader, incredible compassion uh, for people who struggle. Um, she <laughs> went here, and her husband Richard did too, he told me. Um, and, um, and you're gonna hear from Kate Hogan, who's a great leader in the legislature as well. I mean, all people doing really good things. Look, life is complicated. Uh, and, uh, you know, for people who didn't appreciate that fact, the pandemic should have opened everybody's eyes. Uh, Senator Markey talked about his, his parents. You know, I was thinking about my parents when, when he was speaking. Uh, my mother and father had me when they were both 18 years old. And um, so the option of pursuing a higher education, you know, never even entered their mind. And my dad, who passed away a couple of years ago, I, I would tell you, um, was the best politician in the world who never went into politics. Um, uh, everybody liked him. Uh, he was in incredibly kind. And uh, I asked him one time, why didn't you ever run for office? Everybody likes you. He said, because I didn't have an education. I didn't feel I had the education to do so. And I felt so bad when he told me that. He ended up you know, running a package store. And thank God people drink because <laughs> he was popular and I was popular as a result of that. Um, but. Um, uh, but you know these, but people like them, you know, could have had the option and probably would have taken advantage of it. And I don't know whether he still would have run a package store or not. But the bottom line is, um, I think he he might have run for office. And um, and again, when I look around this room, I mean, everybody is involved in good things. Uh, and so I am I am grateful uh, that UMass, because not every college or university took advantage of th this initiative 50 years ago, you did. And as a result, this community is much, much better and much more, and, and has benefited from everybody who is here today. So I, I just wanna say I'm, I'm just thrilled to be here um, to, uh, to say congratulations. Uh, and I, am, I, and I, I have a new appreciation uh, for, the, um, for this campus. Um, because I, really, I don't think I really appreciated what this program was about or what it produced until today. Uh, and I thank God that uh, 50 years ago someone said, we're gonna do this and we're gonna include more people, we're gonna give people uh, ladders of opportunity to succeed, and so many of you did. So thank you so very, very much. Thanks very much, Congressman McGovern. At this point, I'd just like to ask the entire staff and faculty of U University Without Walls to please stand. This is the group, this is the group that works tirelessly every day in support of educational equity. Thank you for all you do. It's now my pleasure to introduce Jose Delgado, Governor Baker's Deputy Chief of Staff for Access and Opportunity 
and a former UWW staff member to present an official citation on behalf of the Office of the Governor. Well, good afternoon. I'm very excited to be back on campus to see some familiar friends and family from UWW. Um, so I'm honored here to be here on behalf of Governor Baker and Lieutenant Governor Polito to recognize University Without Walls for 50 years, five decades, 50 años. <laughs> think about that. That's, that's a big number. I can't think that far back. In my role with the governor, uh, our team works with the administration, with secretaries, with state agencies to try to make sure we knock down barriers for those folks who historically have been left out of the process, whether it be through employment, through supplier diversity, construction, and a whole host of things. But UWW has been doing that for 50 years. Truly inspiring, helping students like Georgia get their degree and that's what makes it so much more exciting for me to be here as a former staff member, because I was there welcoming the incoming students and hearing their stories. And Georgia's story is magnificent, and she's one of many folks who put their life on hold um, for whatever life had their way, whether it be their families, uh, to take care of other things. And then they went and got back and said, it's my turn now. And so congratulations to you, Georgia, um, again, for, for accomplishing, because that's a huge accomplishment, and particularly to the staff and faculty at UWW who work tirelessly to keep the students on track whether, with all the distractions that life brings. Um, so, so I want to thank the university leadership, Chancellor Subhaswamy, um, the faculty and staff, um, and the students and alumni and family for your continued commitment to University Without Walls. And not only the commitment, but expanding the branding opportunity of what is UWW. Um, so on behalf of Governor Baker and Lieutenant Governor Polito, happy birthday, happy 50th birthday, UWW. Um, I'd also like to ask the Massachusetts legislative delegation if they want to come up. Uh, and Joe, if you can come up, we could take a quick picture with the citation on behalf of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So yeah, come on. Don't be shy. I know you guys like to take pictures. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jose. Uh, as was mentioned earlier, Senator uh, Joe Comerford, Senators Joe Comerford and Adam Gomez, who would have been here, but they are busy in session at the se at the state senate. They have, however, provided a citation from the State Senate, and Representative Mindy Dom has also provided one from the House, and those are outside on the history table, the UWW history table, so please take a look at them before you go. It's now my honor to introduce Ronnie Selig. A Framingham native, UWW student Ronnie Selig is an Emmy, Peabody, and DuPont award-winning media executive co-president of Ron Mar Studios, and a Tony-nominated theatrical producer. In her, yeah, go ahead. In her previous role as a senior executive producer and director for CNN's Health, Wellness, and Medical Unit, Ronnie developed cutting-edge breaking news coverage, including the earthquake in Haiti, the war in Iraq, the Ebola outbreak in Africa, and the Boston Marathon bombings. She's held leadership roles with The View, The Rosie O'Donnell Show, Live with Regis and Kelly, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, and other premier and award-winning programming. Ronnie's completed the Ironman World Championship in Kona. Two, wait, it gets better. Uh, two swims around the Statue of Liberty. Over. 100 triathlons and marathons around the world, 
and performed the one-woman cabaret show in New York City. <laughs> Married 35 years this July to her husband, Stuart. They have two 20-something children, Sophie and Noah. Next month, Ronnie will celebrate earning her bachelor's degree in interdisciplinary studies in journalism studies. Please join me in welcoming Ronnie Selig. That's all fiction. <laughs> this is a real pinch me moment, I gotta say. Wow. Thank you, Associate Provost Bartolomeo, for such a warm introduction. I am, beyond, I am beyond honored and humbled and nervous to be here today among such luminaries and change makers, all of you. I am a senior to graduate in 29 days. Not that I'm counting. <laughs> I, 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 I can't believe how exciting uh, it is to be here to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the University Without Walls here at UMass in Amherst. You know, it didn't take me quite 50 years to get here, but it took me long enough. You see, I was scheduled to graduate from college in 1982, a mere 40 years ago. So now you may be wondering, what's her story? Right? Well, I'll give you the Reader's Digest version. A graduate of Framingham South High School, yes, I am a huge Boston sports fan, I attended Ithaca College as a vocal major in music, and I quickly realized that I would never make it as an opera singer, I loved singing, but that just wasn't going to be my jam. I transferred in my sophomore year at Ithaca to communications, and I fell in love with television, all of it, production, the whole business. I relish everything about the industry, the people, the lights, the camera, the action, the fun. I was fortunate to get an internship that summer at a little-known show entitled Good Morning America. And then I quickly secured a job there at age 20. I transferred to NYU's Gallatin Division, set my alarm for 3 a.m. daily, and I tried managing breaking news, global travels, and college. That was kind of a recipe for disaster. My producing career took off, and I promised myself and my patient parents who did not have the opportunity to attend college that I would eventually return. Fast forward to 2012, 30 years later. I did return. I was reaccepted at Gallatin and thought this was my final hurrah. Well, at that point now, I was senior executive producer for CNN Medical Coverage overseeing all health, and Dr. Sanjay Gupta. And then Ebola broke out. Another recipe for academic disaster. I did not choose a career that was conducive to returning to in-person classes and always wanted to finish my degree. After seeing both of our children graduate with honors from their respective universities, it was my turn, so I thought. Moving to Northampton from New York City in the summer of 2020, in the middle of a global pandemic, I took a breath and I saw I was surrounded by five colleges. <laughs> I wanted to belong. I reached out to UMass Amherst, spoke with someone in admissions, and they quickly steered me to the university without walls. Yay. <laughs> What does UWW have that made this moment possible for me? A mission centering on patience, flexibility, compassion, remote classes, remarkable support, and phenomenal course options. While relearning to navigate college, now in a digital age, may not be simple for mature students like me, I never felt alone when Blackboard and computer issues rained down and started crashing all around me, 
I, I, I knew that there was somebody that I could turn to. I was starting a new production company, and I never felt abandoned. There are not enough superlatives to express the gratitude I feel towards the t this team of exceptional professors, staff, leaders. And someone recently asked me, what is the secret sauce that makes UWW so special? Well, that's simple. It's all of you. You are the force of nature behind this program that has propelled me and thousands like me forward after a very long journey. I did not enroll to get the next C-suite job. No, I am here because I love to learn and I'm a never give up person and you all have my back. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Happy 50th anniversary, University Without Walls. Thank you, Ronnie. Our next speaker is John Wells, Senior Vice Provost for Lifelong Learning. In this role, Dr. Wells oversees the strategic integration of online learning into the overarching educational mission of UMass Amherst. His key responsibilities include overseeing the strategic expansion of University Without Walls, as well as the implementation of the UMass Flex Initiative. Please join me in welcoming my friend and colleague, John Wells. Good evening, everyone. It's an honor to speak uh, today. Um, a little over four years ago, I was asked to lead continuing professional education at uh, UMass Amherst, and this was a unique challenge given where higher education was headed. Uh, given the rapidly growing number of students who were looking to pursue their education non-traditionally, on campus, off campus, part-time. And at the same time, we still needed to serve our traditional residential on-campus student population. And, and this was something that I refused to accept, that these two student populations needed to exist in silos. In fact, they needed, uh, we needed to blur that line and, and integrate them, because that's where I think our strength was. So fortunately for me, given this challenge, the path forward was right in front of me. And at that time, we had a 46-year head start. University of Walls had a stellar reputation for helping adult learners complete their degrees. But when I took a closer look, there was much more to UWW than met the eye. Back in 1971, the UWW mission was to serve all non-traditional students from 16 to 96. And as a plus, the UWW faculty and staff had a profound understanding of how to serve this non-traditional student, not just the adult learner. So, you know, at, at, at this point, I was uh, looking over at Hadley. Because at that time, they were, uh, the University of Walls office was in Hadley, Massachusetts, in Venture Way. And my first question was, what are you guys doing over there? <laughs> All right, because you're, you're the campus secret weapon. We need to get you over here. And I'm proud to say they now reside right over here uh, next to the campus center, and, and we're welcome to have him here. But I will say in the spring of uh, 2008, I made a very fortuitous trip to the UWW office on, on, in Venture Way, and in collaboration with UWW leadership, we decided to return to that original mission and create an academic offering that gave every student a home, from pre-college to individual online courses and certificates, to interdisciplinary undergraduate degrees, to postgraduate upskilling, to graduate degrees. UWW represented the glue that made supporting the lifelong learner at UMass Amherst possible. And I, I want to say, you know, briefly at that meeting, Melanie De Silva and Ingrid Bracey, I want to say, was in that room, and that was an out-of-body experience where I kind of looked down on that and think, we're going to look back, I think, Melanie, and say, that was a real inflection point, and, and it was just an honor to be in the room with them that day. So, Moving forward, UWW is playing an instrumental role in UMass Flex, which is the UMass Amherst Flexible Learning Initiative. UWW is the perfect place to introduce and disseminate revolutionary approaches, providing students with more flexible ways to engage with UMass Amherst and pursue their educational goals. I often refer to UWW as the campus showroom for innovative and flexible approaches to learning. I tell my colleagues often, it's better to be lucky than good. I was fortunate 
that the solutions to our key challenges were sitting in UWW just waiting to be unleashed. And the thing I find most impressive about UWW is that while it's 50 years in the making, its best years are ahead of it. That is the ultimate tribute in that a truly innovative and revolutionary mission stands the test of time. I'm proud to be associated with University Without Walls and its future just couldn't be brighter. Thank you. Thank you, John. I now have the great honor of introducing our keynote speaker. Speaker pro tempore Kate Hogan is in her seventh term as state representative for the third Middlesex district. Named speaker pro tem by Speaker Mariano, she's the highest ranking LGBTQ member in House leadership. In past terms, Representative Hogan served as House division leader, House Chair of the Joint Committee on Public Health and a co-chair of the Elder Caucus, where she was instrumental in shepherding landmark public health legislation into law. Representative Hogan has been a tireless advocate for building our regional economy, enhancing and improving our health care system, and she has been a voice for our elders and most vulnerable. Working as a bridge between House leadership and members to tackle the state's biggest issues. She's currently co-chairing the interagency PFAS task force and serves on the House COVID-19 and State House reopening working groups. She also currently serves on the respectfully subcommittee of the Governor's Council to address sexual assault and domestic violence, is an advisory board member for the Middlesex Children's Advocacy Center and is a member of the Board of Directors for the 495 Metro West Partnership. She's also a strong supporter of the Boys and Girls Club of Asabit Valley. Prior to her first election in 2008, she had a successful 25-year sales and marketing career in the publishing and print industry. A 1988 graduate of the University Without Walls, she's actively involved in her alma mater's Women into Leadership program proudly facilitating opportunities for young women to grow as public leaders. Please give a warm welcome to speaker pro tempore, Kate Hogan. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. I am very humbled to be here among other graduates of UWW, truly. And I would like to thank the Senator, the Congressman, the Chancellor, the Provost, and all the state representatives who are here today. You truly have a dream team here in Western Massachusetts. I would also like to appoint a personal privilege to uh, introduce my sister Meg Hogan, who is also a UWW alum. and CEO of the Boston Senior Home Care. And she'll be mentioned in this address, so good afternoon, everyone. It is glorious, glorious to be back here on campus. It always is. I find this time of year such a vibrant one around colleges, truly. Undergraduate students gearing up for the end of their semester, prospective students touring and making hard choices about where to further their educational journey. Such crossroads. Last year, UMass Amherst welcomed nearly 5,000 first year undergraduate students as part of the most diverse class in the university's history. At the same time, on this campus of us all walking past each other in, in wonder and delight, the University Without Walls program serves 10,000 students with its universe of offerings that include traditional on-campus students taking online summer and winter classes, 
pre-college programs, pathway programs, undergraduate and graduate degree programs, graduate certificates, and professional development. That's a lot. That's a lot. This variety of offerings confirms, confirms there's no one way to earn a college degree. Higher education is not a one-size-fit-all, and it is not always a direct path to a career. No promises on that end. But it is a promise. Higher education is a promise. My sister Meg Hogan and I, Irish twins, we'll say no more, <laughs> enrolled at UMass Amherst right out of high school, attending college and earning a degree was always the expectation of our loving parents. But by the time we enrolled, our mother was widowed and family funds weren't available for us to finish. So we paused our studies and what else do you do? You go to work. It was only later, while working full time, that we discovered the University Without Walls and its degree completion program. And this program empowered us to finish what we started and fulfill the promise we had made to our parents and to ourselves. The program that we meticulated into the UWW Interdisciplinary Studies Program is UWW's signature program and one of the largest majors at the university, serving about 800 students annually. UWW offers the same high quality courses that are part of UMass Amherst and allows students to consider their own careers and choose courses that they need to finish a degree. You know, as students, we were encouraged to draw lessons from our real life work experience and apply that earned experience in capstone projects. And what we realized was, hey, we knew a couple of things and maybe we're gonna learn a little bit more. And those teachers and advisors were magnificent. I attribute much of my sister and my professional success to the flexibility of the UWW program and the quality and strength of its approach to learning and its respect. Let's use that word here today too. Its respect for the student's life experience as we engaged with the UWW program. UWW always seems to be enriched by its students in what it is doing. For half a century, UWW has welcomed students from all races, cultures, and backgrounds, older students, students with children and family obligations, poor students, and students who took a different direction after high school to structure their own educational program. My sister Meg enrolled in UWW as a single working parent trying to balance college with work and parenthood. UWW provided her with flexible learning opportunities, personalized support, and the encouragement she needed to succeed. Meg went on to earn an MBA from Western New England College and now serves as the Chief Executive Officer at Boston Senior Home Care. Today, I serve in the Massachusetts House of Representatives for the 3rd Middlesex District, and as Speaker Pro Tem, I am proud to represent the people of my district while also promoting opportunities for women through the UMass Women into Leadership Program. But Meg and I are among thousands of other non-traditional students who would not have earned our degrees without UWW. We are grateful that 50 years ago, UMass pioneered this program and reimagined how college could be experienced and how it could impact so many here in this great commonwealth. Getting into college and accessing funding to pay for it is still complicated. 
it's still complicated and it's expensive. Yet without post-secondary credentials, finding and keeping a good paying job is extremely difficult. These factors make UWW's personalized and inclusive educational program of vital, vital importance. During the pandemic, we have had to reimagine how to deliver services and share experiences to make them safer and ensure accessibility or to pivot to new business models. I see UWW's success and emphasis on flexibility, innovation, and accessibility allows it to continue to lead among learning models. Education is a promise to the future. It forges leaders and fosters citizenship. It prepares diverse and talented people to gain experience and expertise and to prepare for an unpredictable future, their future and our shared future whether in the sciences, public service, business, or the arts. At this critical time in our history, when democracy itself is at risk, developing innovative solutions to intractable problems has never, ever been more important. As we collectively celebrate 50 years of UWW and as a Commonwealth works to compete in an increasingly diverse and global economy. We recognize that the university without walls is needed now more than ever, more than ever, to continue the promise it made 50 years ago. To all the alum here today, You were, you are, UWW. Thank you and onward to another 50 years of students. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Leader, for, su for such a powerful speech and a perfect conclusion to the formal speaking part of this celebration. Before we adjourn, though, there is one more acknowledgement that I'd like to make. Uh, you've heard the name already mentioned today, but this event would not have been possible without the tireless work of our indomitable Director of Marketing and Communication, Melanie De Silva. So, so now I invite you to stay with us and enjoy some food, drink. There is actually some stronger drink downstairs uh, and conversation and to visit our history table. And please watch for an email from us about UWW's UMass Gives coming up on April 28th and 29th. <laughs> These efforts are part of our 50 plus one for the future campaign to raise much needed funds for scholarships for non-traditional students. Thanks again for being here, and forgive me, Swami, go UWW! <laughs>